okay good morning students so today we are going to uh, start the third lecture of the series introduction to environmental laws and policies so till now we have discussed what is environment what are the components of environment what is the necessity for uh, bringing environmental laws and policies what is the a need for implementation of environmental laws and policies what were the incidents which led to framing of environmental laws and policies what were the conditions which basically prompted the implementation of environmental laws and policies how environmental laws and policies can be strengthened by participation of even every individual every state country okay we also discussed few international conventions and international cooperations that took place in this particular regard and then one important segment that was left that we are going to cover today and that is environment and governance that is basically what is the role of government government agencies and governance policy regarding the environment if you just just refer to this diagram on the right side you can see there are three sets environment governance and society or social and there is a merging of the sets okay or union of the sets and you see the common point which is union of all the three sets environment governance and social it is referred to as esg that is environment society and govern or environment societal and government governance or governmental level so basically the union of all the three sets is required for proper implementation and enforcement and maintenance of environmental laws and policies and then only the issues can be tackled properly if environment policies and gov uh, government they participate but the society doesn't participate which is the union of environment and governance it's not going to benefit even if the environment and only people they are con concerned they are bothered but the government government authorities are not regulating then also it will not be beneficial it will be fruitful only if all the three tires of this particular set they work together simultaneously with proper mutual uh, cooperation so the relationship between the environment and governance refers to how governmental systems policies and institutions manage and address environmental issues good environmental governance involves the effective transparent and accountable management of natural resources and environmental concerns by governmental bodies at various levels as well as collaboration with non governmental actors and stakeholders so there are ngos there are uh, agencies okay private and government as well as the environmentalist and key people who have to be basically working in cooperation with each other and then only good environmental uh, outcomes can be obtained proper enforcement of environmental policies can be ensured so the intersection which is basically referring to the set diagram okay venn diagram of the various sets environment governance and societal so the intersection of these uh, to concept is vital for addressing environment challenges and promoting sustainable development so here are a uh, key points to consider so policy and regulation so how policy is framed and how it is regulated how it is enforced and regulated okay how it is effectively maintained so effective governance involves the development and implementation of policies and regulations that address environmental concerns government play a crucial role in creating and enforcing laws related to pollution control natural resource management and conservation 
then international cooperation it is it is very very essential because i've told previously if few countries obey the rules and regulations they try to prevent pollution they try to uh, regulate the generation of greenhouse gases okay they try to protect the flora and fauna but other countries they do not try they do not get involved they do not cooperate then can it uh, can the global warming be tackled like that it's global warming it's not a national warming or some country specific warming it's global warming similarly global climate change the climate is going to change for all right global climate change if few countries abide and other countries other such countries avoid then it is not going to be fruitful okay everyone have to come to common terms come to understanding and everyone have to basically ensure that the rules laws are obeyed they are not flouted so international cooperation in this regard is very very essential environmental issues often transcend national borders requiring international collaborations and governance global agreements and organizations such as paris agreement on climate change are examples of efforts to address environmental challenges through coordinated governance so the paris agreement or the several protocols just like montreal protocols kyoto protocols they are basically benchmarks for international cooperation and all the countries should come forward and effectively enforce maintain the protocol so that these global uh, problems are tackled with properly incentives and penalties you know uh, if any law is framed if any policy is made then the people who are strictly adhering to those policies the laws should get some incentives should get some uh, sort of reward okay so that they are encouraged and others are also encouraged and those who are violating okay those who are not maintaining the protocol there should be some punishment there should be some penalties okay for those so that that will also act as a deterrent for others to see and follow right so governance mechanism can include a mix of incentive and penalties in incentives or rewards to those who obey who adhere penalties and fines to those who disobey or flout with the rules okay so this might involve tax breaks for eco friendly practices or fines for activities that harm the environment then transparency and accountability so good environmental governance requires transparency and accountability so open access to information about environmental issues uh, government actions and corporate practices allows for public scrutiny and engagement in decision making process so there has to be a transparency all the laws policies that are framed have to be transparent transparent in the sense what is underlying in that particular law what are the postulates okay how the law has been framed what are its uh, targets target areas everything has to be uh, in front of everyone okay every everything has to be transparent and also there should be accountability why the policy was not implemented why the uh, regulation was not enforced or why it was not being maintained why it's it it is it's not being obeyed so everything has to be basically taken care of right so good environmental governance requires transparency and accountability open access to information about environmental issues government actions and corporate practices allows for public scrutiny and engagement in decision making processes then public participation it's very very important that public participation should be there unless public participation is there unless people every individual get involved involved in sense themselves in enforcing of the environmental regulations and laws and policies okay unless it happens the entire scheme entire movement is not going to be successful 
it requires involvement of every individual okay so inclusive governance involves the active participation of public and stakeholders in the environmental decision making public awareness education and involvement in policy discussions contribute to more robust and sustainable outcomes unless people get involved properly thoroughly deeply into the system unless people cooperate and they ensure the proper enforcement of the regulations and policies and unless they strictly adhere and obey to the regulations and also keep a watch surveillance on whether uh, the industries are complying with that or not if they are also witnessing that too much of plume is being released or some industry is stealthily secretly dumping uh, maybe solid waste or uh, waste water or effluent into the water body they should also report it to the regulatory authorities okay <coughs> so that the industry can be penalized it can be inspected so public awareness education and involvement in policy discussion contributes to more robust and sustainable outcomes it's very essential then one very important term you must have heard before also csr that is corporate social responsibility basically all the industries factories uh, power plants mining and other uh, setups they have certain corporate they are basically corporate and they have certain social roles roles to play okay because they are exploiting the natural resources they are utilizing the resources so they should also contribute to some in some way to the society okay under csr initiatives they can launch suppose literacy drives they can launch eco parks okay they can set up uh, grounds or stadiums okay eco friendly stadiums eco friendly parks they can set up uh, suppose corporate social schools and all so businessmen and industries play a significant role in environmental governance many companies adopt csr initiatives committing to environment friendly practices sustainable sourcing and reducing their ecological footprint so basically the corporates they can educate they can contribute in mass awareness of the people okay they can contribute in building a strong public opinion against unscrupulous use of fossil fuels or dumping of waste water or uh, solid waste into the nearby ambient environment <coughs> so it's very important that the corporate the business houses they play this uh, corporate social responsibility it's utmost required from their end then economic instruments one important one more important segment so governing governance strategies can utilize economic instruments such as carbon pricing or cap and trade systems to incentives uh, basically industries and individuals to reduce their environmental impact these mechanisms aim to internalize environmental costs into economic activities so basically all the economic means the financial ways okay that is say carbon pricing or cap and trade systems so these are methods by which uh, certain efforts can be incentivized okay suppose if carbon generation is reduced if industries adopt to methodologies which reduces the carbon generation so can some form of incentives can be provided to the industry whether some reward can be provided to them some monetary benefits can be provided to them or to societies which adhere to the law okay so <coughs> economic instruments are also important segment for environment and governance then technological innovations so you know every day efforts are being made for adopting environment friendly practices develop new tools and technologies which will utilize resources in optimum way which will curtail the pollution level 
which will reduce the generation of pollutants which can basically reutilize recycle and reuse the used up <coughs> waste products so govern uh, governance framework should encourage and support the development and adoption of environmentally friendly technologies this includes research funding tax in incentives and regulatory supports for innovations that contribute to sustainable practices <coughs> so basically here also governance has to play an important role that is encouraging and supporting the development and adoption of environment friendly technology just like uh, we must have heard uh, about four r's recycle reduce reuse and basically uh, reducing of the dependence okay if possible recycling of the th things which can be utilized again and again okay reusing of the things which have been utilized once okay so these are basically adopted uh, for technology uh, as an innovative way to reutilize the waste just like solid waste they can be reutilized you know even the municipal solid waste which have been basically thrown into the garbage there from there there are certain legacy wastes which can be reutilized okay all the waste which are generated there are very vital segments which can be reutilized from there just like papers can be recycled plastics can be recycled okay organic things uh, which is present in the dustbin in the garbage uh, bins and cans they can be reutilized for making compost for biological decomposition and generation of uh, organic manure from there okay the plastics can be either recycled or they can be utilized for generation of uh, fuels you know from plastics some sort of oils can be prepared which can be used as lubricants and for other purposes okay so similarly more such uh, methodologies should be researched upon okay so that more environment friendly technologies are developed and they can be utilized so for that research funding has to be there because people will try people and also the uh, people who are researching not only the common people but the people who are involved in researches organizations which are involved in researches so they should be funded okay there should be some incentives for them so that they can research they can uh, look deeply into the matter and find out whether some uh, processes can be developed for tackling of the wastes okay or utilizing reutilizing of the wastes so this includes research funding tax in incentives and regulatory support for innovations that contribute to sustainable practices i have repeated many times the sustainable practices are those practices which are adopted for utilizing the resource in the most optimum way so that the resource a good part of it is left for futuristic use for future generation as well as for future use of that uh, resource by those people only then adaptation and resilience it's important concept adaptation and resilience if you refer to a dictionary dictionary for these words adaptation and resilience you will see that adaptation it basically means Uh, adhering to a particular situation and trying to just uh, reorient oneself according to the situation okay adapting to a adapting or utilizing okay a thing adaptation and resilience is basically uh, how can you describe it as uh, suppose a fighting spirit if anything okay is put to a particular problem or exposed to a particular a uh, threat exposed to a particular situation which is suppose odd situation difficult uh, circumstances or if anything is jeopardized okay then 
the resilience basically refers to getting back to normal state okay by fighting that problem by minimizing or uh, curtailing that problem going back to the previous state the normal state that is basically resilience so environmental governance should not only focus on mitigation but also on adaptation and building resilience to the impacts of climate change this includes developing strategies to cope up with uh, changing weather patterns rising sea levels and other environmental challenges so these are all resilience okay developing strategies to cope up with the changing weather patterns what can be strategies that can be adopted to basically uh, deal with the changing weather patterns temperature is increasing or it's raining uh, incessantly hectically okay sea level is rising or glaciers are melting so what can be the resilient methods to deal with these problems okay rising sea levels and others are environmental challenges so what can be uh, basically the bet uh, better steps towards adaptation with this situation and or adaptation of such uh, regulations which can deal with this situation and resilience okay what can be the resilience how they can be combated how these problems can be sorted out okay this basically refers to resilience and the last segment is monitoring and evaluation so it is very very much essential monitoring how do you monitor if you don't monitor if authorities don't monitor then nothing is going to be obeyed even if industry start obeying if monitoring is not done on a regular basis they are going to just uh, uh, they are going to just get back to their previous methodologies okay they are not going to be bothered about unless these are monitored properly so a proper monitoring a regular on a regular basis checking okay raids checking of samples checking of the chimneys and factories okay stacks has to be done it has to be regulated okay otherwise they are not going to obey if they are not monitored if they are not basically uh, asked about how they are adopting okay how they are utilizing they are not going to adhere to that okay so governance uh, mechanism needs robust monitoring and evaluation systems to assess the effectiveness of policies and initiatives the regular reviews ensure that environmental goals are met and adjustments adjustments whatever required can be made as needed so it's very important that regular reviews are done to ensure that environmental goals are reached and for that maintenance of regular reviews basically monitoring has to be done and monitoring of that can be done by governmental uh, agencies as well as the non governmental ngos organizations and they can also be monitored by the common people so those regular reviews ensure that the environmental goals are met and adjustments can be made as needed the necessary things can be adopted which can do away with those problems so government agencies they can take care they can also take help of non governmental organizations and individuals environmentalists the whistle blowers okay who can get themselves involved into the process of regulating and monitoring of the things so as we have studied in this particular introduction chapter that all these things are very essential unless they are properly collaborated unless they go hand in hand unless they work together the issues cannot be sorted the things cannot be taken care of so now it depends whether everything is adopted properly and done on a regular basis in synchronization with each other if it is not then the protocols the laws will go in vain it will be futile so the protocols laws which are framed they have to be properly implemented regulated on regulated and monitored on regular basis and necessary 
arrangements as required should be adopted so this was the last segment of this particular module in the next class we will begin the next module which will be sustainable development so that's all for today students please do take care of yourselves and also study properly on a regular basis thank you so much